In today's redstone video, I'm going to show you how to build a shop in Minecraft 1.14. But this isn't any old shop, as I'm sure you know on the Hermitcraft server, me, Iskan and Grian have been working on the Sahara project, which is essentially recreating Amazon in Minecraft, and we've probably spent hundreds of hours on it between us, so for the average Minecraft player it's not really worth thinking about. So I thought I'd show you something that is similar to Sahara, but a little bit more buildable. And I think as far as starts go, this is a pretty solid one. So here is our miniature Sahara store, looking very sleek and very modern. If you do want to build this for yourselves, then this grey wall sticks out 10 blocks from the white concrete at the back, the ceiling sticks out by 4 blocks from the back wall, and the back wall is 9 blocks across. The rest of the dimensions you can kind of pick up from me flying around like this. And of course, if you don't want to build in this style, then completely ignore everything that I've just said and do your own thing. But the important part that we are going to need is the back wall, because that's where our store is actually going to be going. So we're going to punch out a little area right here, and this is where the actual selector for our store is going to be. So we're going to have a trapdoor, that's going to come in handy. We're going to have a lectern, and that's actually how we're going to be selecting the items from the store. We're going to have a button, I think that's going to be our order button, and then we're also going to have just a little block right here, which is going to block off access to the lectern while that button is pressed. The other things that we're going to need is a little cutout right here, and also a little cutout right here. And I can't help but notice that this gap doesn't look so good, so I think actually what we can do is grab ourselves a log, and also some trapdoors, and then some leaves. And I think, I think we're going to need to deploy a nice... <laughs> nice looking bush right here. When in doubt, just add a potted plant and things begin to look better. Anyway, next up, it's time to clear out a bunch of space. Now, just because I said it was going to be easier than the real Sahara project doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be absolutely tiny. I mean, I've taken out 17 blocks from behind our lectern, I've taken out 3 blocks beneath our lectern, and I've gone 5 blocks above the lectern, and I've also taken out one extra block on either side of our concrete wall just to allow us to move around in this place. So this is where all of the redstone is going to be going. And I'm getting bored of decorating, so let's start chucking some of that stuff around, shall we? Right, I'm, I'm going to run a redstone line out from our lectern. And for now, this is entirely customizable, okay? But for my demonstration, I think I'm going to have eight completely normal items. Okay, so we've got eight blocks there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're going to take the outputs from these and we're going to run them into a red coder. Now that might sound a little bit complicated, but trust me, it's really easy. What a red coder essentially does, it allows us to take independent redstone <laughs> signal outputs from different levels of signal strength, which makes it sound a lot more complicated than it actually is. Okay, I can promise you that, and they're really, really easy to build. All you have to do is repeat this module that I've just done here a bunch of times. So repeat that over and over. Boom, there it is. So if we take this book right here, which has 15 pages, it has to have 15 pages, and put it into this lectern, and then select a page, for example, page number five, then you will see that one, two, three, four, five. The fifth one is lit up. That is a red coder. That explains it so much better. So that's our selector kind of worked out. Now it's time to start dealing with the ordering. So that's just kind of looking through the items, you're selecting which ones you like. If you like the look of one of the items, then you have to order it by hitting this button right here. And now we're going to connect this up. Now, the beauty of this system is that you can have different order quantities, okay? So the price is always the same, it's always going to cost one diamond, but you could buy maybe one trident for one diamond, so then you get a single item back, but you could also buy a stack of dirt, okay, so you get different order quantities coming out there, and you do those in different ways. So the first one that I'm going to create is I'm going to create single item orders, okay, so these first three right here, you're going to get one item for one diamond, so these are the more expensive items, things like tridents or iron blocks, redstone components, you know, whatever you want to charge one diamond for, and the way that we're going to do it is something a little bit like this. So we've got that set up, and then we have some droppers, and it really is as easy as that. The items that you're selling are going to go in here. So for example, I've got some tridents, and I've got some ender chests, and then we need something else. Emeralds. 
Emeralds seem like the way to go. So let's move on to the next step, which is the multiple item order. This is where things begin to get interesting. It's a tiny bit more involved, but it's, it's nothing too complicated. I'm sure we'll be able to manage. So we're just going to have a pair of repeaters right here. Obviously the length of this redstone line depends on how many single item orders you've going to have. So that's going to be different for every single redstone contraption, but we're going to have an observer facing in this direction and then an observer facing in this direction. We're gonna have a block right there and also a block right here that's very important to stop these redstone lines canoodling and then this is going to be our redstone line that runs into the multi item orders and we can deal in order quantities of 8 16 32 or 64 the 32 and 64s are going to be over here because they're once again a tiny bit more complicated so we're going to run repeater outputs into these and then here is just kind of the same old deal i mean we have the sticky pistons we have the blocks and then we have the droppers if you want eight items then you only have a single dropper if you want 16 items then you have a line of droppers up at the top and also a line of droppers underneath so both of these droppers are going to be firing eight will come out of this one eight will come out of this one giving you 16. So just for some examples for items in the store, you get eight comparators per diamond, you get eight observers per diamond, you get 16 redstone repeaters per diamond, and you get 16 pistons per diamond. Anyway, it is now time to up the complication factor because we're now going to start dealing in 32s. And you may notice that we don't really have much room for adding in any more droppers vertically. So we're going to add them in horizontally. Now this just involves adding something like this. So now we have two pistons that extend on this signal strength right here. So when we reach this signal strength, both of these pistons extend. So if we just increase the length of this redstone line right here, both of these blocks will pop up like this, which means that we can then have all four of these droppers firing. So eights will come out of this dropper, eight will come out of this dropper, eight will come out of this dropper, and eight will come out of this dropper giving us 32 items in total. Now the question is, how do we then continue on this redstone line? Because obviously we do want to continue on this redstone line, maybe we want another 32 item dropper. Well the way that we do it is we place a comparator, we put it into subtract mode, and then we have another comparator running into the side of it, and then we grab ourselves a chest, and put one single item on the inside of the chest that will run into the side of the comparator and that will mean that the signal strength coming out of this comparator will be one lower than the signal strength running into the back of it so it's essentially doing what this is but it's adding a bit of an extender in i really really <laughs> <laughs> that, that made sense. So I've just added in another 32 item module just in place right there and you may notice a slight issue which is that this redstone now runs directly into this piston which is going to cause us some problems so when that sort of thing starts to happen just grab a lever and place it facing downwards like that. That will redirect the redstone signal and stop it from connecting into this piston because that could be bad news. Now what if we want to do a 64 item dropper? Well, once again, we're going to need to add another kind of extender into our red coder here. So that is that. And then we're going to need to grab ourselves a chest with one single item on the inside running into the side of the comparator that's in subtract mode. That's all good. Then we need to add the module for our red coder. So let's quickly do that. And then we do exactly the same thing that we've done for the 16 ones is we've just done this. But then we also add this little setup right here. So now we're including four pistons. One, two, three, four. And all of those are going to have blocks on top. And then once again, we have to watch out for the redirection of the redstone signal so that that redstone line doesn't run directly into that piston. Because once again, that's going to cause some problems. But let's extend out this redstone line right here and then add in our eight droppers. So eight times eight, 64 items for every single diamond. Now I will be the first person to admit that that was not the most exciting <laughs> in terms of redstone bits and bobs. I mean, it's just, it's, wow, I, oh my, what, get me away. As I was saying, that all just had to be explained because I really wanted you to understand what on earth is going on here. Anyway, let's move on to the more exciting stuff. Coming back out to the front of the build, we're going to be working in this area here because this is where our order actually arrives to. So we're going to have a little setup like this and then we're going to have some glass panes right here just so we can stare on through. And then here is going to be the barrel where all of the items are going to be arriving. So we're going to have hoppers. Oh no, please tell me I haven't built this at the wrong height. No, no, I haven't. I panicked a lot then. Okay, so the hoppers actually go up here. Hopper running down into the barrel and then a hopper running into the side. And then this area here 
is where our water line is going to be going. You see where that would have been a problem? Anyway, we need to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we need to make sure that all of this area is covered. Especially this area, because once again, you can see why that would be a problem if it wasn't. Boom and boom. I didn't actually check, but I'm all good because I'm a professional. I'm warning you, this next bit is kind of barrels galore. Okay, so we're going to have a barrel down here with a hopper running down into the barrel and then a dropper facing downwards into that hopper, which is running into the barrel. We're then going to have another barrel over here with a hopper running into the side of that barrel. We're then going to have a barrel here, which is going to be on display, so make sure that it's in the orientation that you like and then a dropper running into the side of that barrel. I will explain what all of these things do as the time comes. So let's start things off with the easy one, which is the receipts barrel. So all we have to do is connect up the dropper into that redstone dot and that's it. <laughs> it really is that simple. So this dropper right here on the inside of it, we've got a bunch of paper that says you owe me one diamond. Every single time that we add an item to our order, a receipt will be sent from that dropper into this barrel. And at the end of our order, a number will be displayed and that's how many diamonds we owe. So for example, if at the end of our delivery of items, we have this many items inside the barrel, that means we owe 16 diamonds. I mean, I feel like that's fairly self-explanatory, but I just want to make it very clear. So now we're moving on to the final circuit, which is one of the easiest ones, which is the payment circuitry. So all we have to do is take a comparator output from the hopper above our barrel right here. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the player who's using the system isn't being sneaky and not using diamonds. So we need to have an item filter, and that is as simple as that. I mean, you've seen, you've seen them all before, and all we have to do is just drag some diamonds across like this, and then put 18 in the first slot. If we bump up to 19, you will see it goes back down to 18. Our item filter is working perfectly, but then we also need to take an extra signal output from this item filter and run it up into this hopper right here, which means that every single time we pay a diamond into the system, it will also unlock this hopper, allowing one of the receipts from our receipt chest to actually drop out. So each time you pay, you owe one less diamond. This is how we're going to be keeping track of how many diamonds the player has paid. So the last thing that we have to do is make sure that the player can actually access their items once they've paid all of their diamonds. And the way that we're going to do that is we are going to create a system that looks a little bit like this. We've got a redstone block going across right here, and we need to run an output into that piston right there, which seems easy enough, but actually we're surrounded by a bunch of things. So we're kind of going to have to snake around a little bit. We're going to run a repeater out like this, and then we're going to have to run that into a block, and then we're going to have to run that redstone line around like that. But that is everything. At least I hope. I really hope. Not quite. Not quite. We need to place a button next to the dropper because otherwise you're not going to be able to pay anything. And then we also need to place a trap door next to the dropper as well, just so you can't fiddle with the dropper at all while the payment is going through. I don't know if that would actually change anything, but still, I mean, it's, it's good to have as a precaution. Then the final thing that we have to do is obviously take our book and actually add in all of the names of the items that we have on the inside of the system. I can't even remember what I put in here. What? Tridents? This is meant to be a redstone shop. Uh, I, I kind of I must have missed the memo on the first three droppers. Anyway, there is one more thing too, and it is a tiny, tiny detail, but it's something I totally forgot about. Barrels are solid blocks, and we've got redstone running directly into it, which means that that hopper is powered. So once again, we need to do the old redirect jobby. Just do a little bit of that, and that will sort it. So now that that's all fixed up, I think it's time for a spending spree. Let's give this thing a tester. Okay, so everything is empty, everything should be ready to go, so let's start this thing. And I want to get the ball rolling with a simple one, okay? I want an ender chest. So let's order that in. There we go, it's in the barrel. I can't access the barrel until, of course, I pay, which we have now got a receipt in there. Okay, so let's go eight comparators. I fancy those. Nice, <laughs> they're all flowing into the system. That's looking good. Uh, 16 repeaters would also be pretty handy. They're always good. Cool, that looked pretty good. Uh, 32 droppers. <laughs> I love this thing. I absolutely love this thing. Okay, and yeah, we need the stuff that connects it all together. 64 redstone dust coming right up. There it is. It's flown into the system. So we owe five diamonds. That is one diamond. Boom. That is 
two diamonds, so we should owe three diamonds now. Nice, that's looking good. We now owe two diamonds. We owe one diamond. And there we go, fully paid. And the redstone is still flowing in. I panicked then. But there we go. That is our order. <laughs> so there we go. Miniature Sahara store all done and dusted. And the best news is you've been able to build it yourselves without spending hundreds of hours. Fantastic. Anyway, I really do hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.